So without further ado, here's Ryan Lebove with uh, Surviving Sidekick, an epic journey. Can y'all hear me in the back? Just kidding. <laughs> um, Hey, uh, I'm Ryan. Uh, just a couple of disclaimers. Uh, there will be live coding, so this will either be educational or entertaining as a train wreck. I don't know. We'll see. Um, so yeah, let's just uh, let's kick it off. So things that go beep in the night. Uh, you may be familiar with on call, especially if you work for a company that supports a product or some consultancy that supports a company that supports a product. Um, it's basically when you go join your customer support team to help users and you pay for every YOLO commit you let through code reviews. Um, so I'm a front end developer, uh, which really just means I'm a developer, especially when you're on call and nobody cares what you do. They just want the stuff working. Um, so I exported some like pretty sophisticated graphs from our librato at work. Um, this is, uh, you know, how it usually starts. You'll notice like, man, there seems to be a spike in queued jobs. Um, K, we see like some 500s hockey sticking and in queue jobs and everything's slow. Nobody's getting emails, nobody's getting text messages. Pager duty's blaring when you're trying to sleep and it's like, do not disturb, but you get up anyways because you like having a paycheck. Um, so, and that's kind of brings me to the topic of today's talk, asynchronous jobs. These are long running tasks that are usually processed outside of your main application flow. Um, your understanding of these is how like maybe one of the first steps to keeping your sanity while you're on call. So that's kind of what we're going to go over today by looking at Sidekick, the world's most popular background job processing software. Um, yes. <laughs> um, so like our goals today at a high level, uh, I, we want to un understand why we need Sidekick. Why can't we just have all these slow running things in our controllers? Who cares? Um, ex we're going to explore the basics of how it works. Uh, we're going to play with monitoring Sidekick, and we're going to fight a literal battle with Sidekick. Um, so, heroes need Sidekicks, and they both need epic journeys. Uh, also, brace yourself for a bunch of terrible Lord of the Rings memes I found. I don't know who made these, but <laughs> yay internet. <laughs> um, so, like I said, we need some type of dummy project as like an abstraction to understand all this stuff. Uh, so, we're going to kind of go like pre-sidekick to using it, and then we're going to optimize it. So we are going to build a literal game, and here's a demo of what it's going to look like. Uh, we can pick characters. They each have entertaining moves names. Like, as you do the moves, you're, like, trying to destroy these people who want your life and your ring and all that stuff. Um, so, yeah. We will wait for the beach ball because... Do what? So Sidekick is software that basically helps you process background jobs, and I'll show you that in one second. Uh, don't die. I'll give it a second. We, absolutely. <laughs> Unequivocally. Uh, so this is where I'm going to ask you to suspend your disbelief. Um, this is not a silly game. It's our actual application, and we are on call. Stuff is broken. So even though we are sending in the eagles and sounding the horn of Gondor, we are going to map this pretty well to sending an e email to the third-party API and running a long-running business process in the background. Uh, so our app is down. Uh, just some game rules to keep things realistic. Uh, we're going to be fighting a battle that must be won by performing moves from a set of players. Battle has HP damage total, and when we win, we'll set a timestamp for the victory. Uh, damage is additive, so we're not going to deal with any, like, dumb math. We're just, like, adding to the damage, and once it's greater than the HP, we win. Uh, a player has uh, things, most interestingly, moves, which each have a damage, a queue time, and a success rate. So the mechanics are, each move has to be performed. So we can't just, like, ignore moves that are low damage or high queue time, like, like, you would not do this with, like, oh, that, that API is really crappy, so we're not even going to worry about running this job. So, um, so each move also must run its defined queue time, blocking some process. We're going to ach achieve this with sleep. Please don't do this in your actual app. Um, <laughs> the battle's won when the damage total is greater than the HP total, and each move must honor its success rate. We can't optimize by ignoring failure, um, though we want to try. <laughs> uh, so technical overview. Um, the, the front end of the game is built with Ember, 
um, which, as DataChomp might have said, is a poor abstraction to send network, <laughs> network requests. So we'll just glaze over that right now. Uh, the back end is built with Rails, um, the conventions-driven framework. Powerful conventions like this very simple new app generator. <laughs> um, but really, uh, like, <laughs> they're actually pretty great. So here, like, I'm making a whole API in four generator commands. Yes, there's scaffolding and whatnot, but like, basically works. Working API, no lines of code touch, with few exceptions. Um, <laughs> uh, cores, anytime we're communicating between an API and a front end, we have to set up cross-origin resource sharing. That's probably right. Uh, seeds. I spent like an embarrassing amount of time making a really fun seed file for us, so we can just like have these pretty pictures and fun quotes. Um, and a few Snowflake endpoints. Uh, activity, so as our app runs, we wanna see like, what is the recent activity? Let's look at this feedback. Uh, the battle, which is just a, we're gonna long pull battle and get stats about our battle. This is not really important to the talk. And then this is move. So every time our character makes a move, we're gonna post to this endpoint. And we'll look at that in a second. Business logic. I have encapsulated all of our business logic in a service, and it looks, this is like the pop-up version of it. We're gonna sleep the queue time. If the move's successful, we're gonna add damage to our damage total, and we're gonna record the move. We have a few exciting rake tasks. One starts a new battle. Another one, we can generate a realistic assault, so like just queuing up a bunch of jobs. Okay, cool. So just had to get that out of the way, build some context, back to our epic journey. <laughs> And uh, this is where we're gonna start doing some live coding. And I just want to kind of emphasize, this is really more like live pairing. If you see something that's wrong, please say so, or we'll just debug it together. <laughs> so uh, I would love if people speak up. Uh, we're gonna do version one, sleepy controllers. Uh, just to set, some, set this round, um, we're gonna go our apps down so we're gonna open it up, we're gonna look at the network request, and we're gonna kind of trace that through the Rails app and see why it's not working. So off to our first code journey. Okay, so here's the running application. Um, cool, and the first step of any on-call issues is usually an API issue, can't be JavaScript. That's nearly impossible. So um, here's the battle, everything's looking fine. We're gonna try to, okay. We see some failures. Um, looking over here in our network request, I see this network request that we're posting to move, which looks right. Um, we're sending a player ID and all this stuff, which looks right. So let's hop over to the API. And the first place we look when anything goes wrong is the routes, kind of give us an idea of where to go. So I see posting to move. Um, battle controller looks like where this lives. Cool, so I see, great, we didn't even implement this. That's why it's broke. Um, like I mentioned earlier, we'll look at now, let's open up the move service. Um, and this is all our business logic, we don't need to really understand all of it right now, but we just know that if we pass a move to this and follow the rules, it's gonna make a move for us. So let's go ahead and implement that. So move equals move. It's a service, so we need to do that. Looks like we pass it some parameters, which we've conveniently looked up ahead of time. Cool. So <clears throat> if we make our move and nothing is erroring, going to render success, and otherwise we're gonna render failure. Um, and we would probably be doing this all slightly differently if this was an actual app. So just kind of bear with a couple of these affordances. Okay, um, move service, instantiating it, making the move. Let's see if it works. Nice, we are back to dealing damage. Uh, this is great. On call is fixed. We tell our customer support team, hey, it's working. We just pushed the master dash triple F, so it should be running again in five seconds. Um, unfortunately, we'll notice some things. Um, again, running this assault task, which is just going to essentially automate the process of us clicking the button. 
Um, we're going to notice something. Um, jobs that finish quickly, finish quickly. Jobs that don't finish quickly, sit there and block our process, which is bad because this means our users are now experiencing issues. This endpoint's going slow, our pager duty's going off again, right? Uh, again, it's working, which is great, but um, this obviously needs to be optimized. So, yeah, Gandalf was sitting there summoning the eagles, and which is great, but it's blocking stuff for all of our other users. Um, which I'm going to go ahead and kill this since it takes about three minutes to win with that. Um, is that all we had to do? It's so easy. Programming is so easy. Boom. Okay. So let me go back to my slideshow so we can look at the next funny meme. Um, so again, our time to victory there averages around three minutes. I know because I ran this a billion times at home because I like watching the tower guard burn. Um, <laughs> but we want it to go faster. So we're now going to use Sidekick. Um, so essentially, this is sitting and sleeping in our controller, which is bad. Uh, we want it to sleep somewhere else. So, so we're going to install Sidekick. Um, I could sit here and explain it for a while, but I think it's just easier to just jump in and install it and get it running. So we're going to kind of RTFM together here. Um, step one, we need to add it to our gem file. We're going to go to Ru the Ruby gem site and act like we don't have the latest version memorized of Sidekick. <laughs> oh, look at this, so many downloads, super popular. Oops. Okay, so here, Jim, <coughs> sidekick, version 5.0.2, latest, always latest, never anything else. Gonna bundle. Um, and just, I'm a very visual person because I work on the front end and I like watching my mistakes jump out at me. Uh, so we're going to run over to the wiki, search monitoring. Sidekick actually comes with this really cool web UI that we get for basically free. Um, obviously, you would want to mount some type of uh, security around this because you don't want a bunch of randos like Rob seeing your sidekick jobs and messing with you, because uh, you would. Um, so we're going to go to the routes. This mounts cleanly as an engine. Need to require this one thing. Cool. All right. Let's restart our server for good measure. Uh, Localhost 3000. We mounted it at Sidekick. Boom. Awesome. So every time we enqueue jobs, um, we'll see stuff here. This is like a basic dashboard to kind of tell us how this is all going. Um, this all lives behind the scenes in Redis, so it exists kind of outside of space and time in terms of your app. Uh, so if your app crashes, you have all this data sitting in Redis that you can go back and process through. Okay, so now that we've done this, we need to make that task asynchronous. Let's go back to the docs because that's what real programmers do. Um, cool, so we need a worker. So let's generate a move worker. Rails, G, sidekick. Is this okay for everybody to see? It's probably a little bit small. <laughs> it is a busy terminal, but that's it means I'm that means I'm productive, right? <laughs> uh, sidekick worker move. Cool. Uh, it even generated a test for us, which we won't touch today. <laughs> Just I'm trying to keep it realistic. Yeah, <laughs> on call. <laughs> no verify, skip test, skip CI. Um, cool. So we have this worker thing, and it's got a pretty simple API. Uh, let's look at our battle controller again, try to figure out how we can make this asynchronous. So since we have this nice service, which we can use in uh, Sidekick, we basically want to do this. Just move this here. Um, and do something like move worker, and if you remember, it was perform async. Form async. 
pass the same arguments to it. We start with that. Uh, now, one thing we're going to have to do, since this is finishing in the background, we actually don't have any real-time feedback that the job succeeded or failed. Um, so in our real app, we would probably want to handle that, but we're going to kind of glaze over that right now. But it still gives us a good thing if, it, if there's an error in this, which there will be. Um, we, do what? After where? Oh, cool. Thank you. Um, so, perform async. Basically, we want to take this. Um, we want to receive some params, uh, and I will show you one of my favorite action support methods: hash with indifferent access. Works great for indifferent humans like me. Basically, this. Um, we can key params with symbols or strings, which I will always confuse in my head. We're just going to use this so this just eliminates a whole layer of bugs. New params, just wrap it in that. Um, so now we need to do params, symbol player, params, symbol new. Cool. So. Uh, yeah, so that, that method comes built on, so this uh, include uh, sidekick worker right here, it's, per, it's included on that, so that's where it comes from. Um, cool, so let's see this train wreck. I'm going to refresh because fail, 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 what's going on? So let's kind of look and see uninitialized constant battle controller move worker. Great point. <laughs> okay, we see a success. Actually, we, one thing we didn't do. Um, Sidekick is currently not running. Um, so we can either do bundle exec sidekick, and we see this cool little ninja dude. Um, but more realistically, we'll just want to put it in our proc file so we don't have to start 7 million things when we start our app. Um, so bundle exec sidekick. And I want this to be kind of like contentious, so we're only going to do a concurrency of five. This means there's going to be five little robots taking things off of our Redis queue at a time instead of just 20. I think that's will allow us to run into some more interesting problems with less load. Cool. So let's run form and start again. See, we have the sidekick process running. Okay. See. Cool. Sidekick saw it. Now let's actually look here. Processed two. So one thing that worries me is I do not see any damage coming off of our person. So something's obviously going on here. Um, so which brings me to my second or third foot gun that I want to talk about. We can't share memory between workers. We can't share memory between Sidekick and Rails. These are two separate instances. So right now, we were just passing a wholesale object to our service, but we can't do that. So we need to do something like player ID and just pass the player ID. And then since this is running in a completely separate service, and this is Rails, we're not sharing memory, um, we need to look that up. So instead, we're going to say player.find params player ID. Cool. So, oh, also, it would really help if we, yeah, no, that's good. No, it's not good. Uh, one thing we're not doing is we're not making the move. It's really hard to execute a function if you don't execute a function. Do what? Oh, you're right. Thanks, Jeremy. Um, yes, code spotter for the win. 
Do what? I know. This again, live pair coding. Thanks, everybody. We we succeed or fail together. Cool. So we restart our server. Anytime we mess with our sidekick worker, since it's loaded separately, we need to restart sidekick. Um, another really fun foot gun. Cool. Ah, we see damage going again. Now, uh, this is super fun to just run over and over again. We're going to do an assault that's heavy now. If you remember previously, since we were blocking, just like snailed along. This is going to queue up 150 random dudes and ladies killing the tower guard, which is totally what I want. So, yep. Mm. It's flashing in the background. Um, and it pulls every two seconds or so. Um, I see tons of enqueued jobs, five busy at a time. That was our concurrency we set. So five guys are executing these all at one time. Uh, we're going to notice something pretty frustrating, though, in a second. Um, as the longer running jobs finish, we have a bug in our code because our health is going to bounce back up. Um, which, if you notice, I didn't put in the mechanics that we have any heals in there. So, like, <laughs> feature or bug, who knows, right? But <laughs> uh, according to us with OnCall, it's a feature. Uh, but we're going to secretly, <laughs> no, we, we tell OnCall what's up, legit. Uh, but now we're going to go look at this service and figure out what has changed that we need to take into consideration now, which I left one little emoji. And um, I actually I made this mistake when I was making the talk, and I had to ask Jeremy for help on this because, like, I don't know where these heals are coming from. And he's like... Well, if you notice, we're grabbing the last battle, which again, this is a clutch. We're not ma we're not managing like multiple game states here; we're just doing one at a time. Um, we're grabbing it and then waiting maybe 20 seconds, and so we have old states sitting around. And so when we sit here and do damage total plus equals the move damage, we have a damage total from like way in the past. So it essentially heals them. So it's like a thousand damage for di for like uh, summoning the eagles, but with this old HP. Great, so there's a lot of ways to fix this. The right way to fix it is probably use the database, um, but we're not gonna do that because we're programmers <laughs> that are lazy <laughs> and on call. Uh, so we're, gonna, we're just gonna reload the battle, which should allow us to go kill this guy. Let's start a new battle. Um, this is bundle exec rake, uh, battle new. Um, Yes, we'll do that. Do what? Yep. Let me do Redis CLI slash DB. <laughs> Thank you, Rob. Uh, we're going to restart Foreman, and we're just going to, like, do another heavy assault. We see it flashing in the background. Uh, no heals now. <laughs> and we're just going to watch, like, children with magnifying glass as we fry this angry little ant. Uh, but let's take a look at Sidekick because we actually see, um, we're going to see some interesting things. If we go into this busy queue, um, things are going well, but one of the things we'll notice, because these are still blocking our concurrent workers, things that take a long time are still blocking. Um, so even though we're doing five at one time, which is great, we still could kill this dude faster. And we're just going to let we're gonna let this run out so you can see the cool animation at the end, and we'll get a victory time. should take less than a minute. Uh, do we have any questions so far? Great. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna let that run and grab our victory time in a second. So again, recapping: added sidekick to our gem file. We mounted it in our routes. We made a worker. We used it in the controller, and all of our problems went away. <laughs> um, so. Took us a minute and 24 seconds, which is like at least twice as fast as previous. Uh, so super science, 24 seconds, 25 seconds, whatever. <laughs> um, and just to review a couple foot guns you'll run into, please don't look that up on Google Images. It's terrible. <laughs> um, <laughs> recap: uh, We can't pass objects. We have to pass strings that can then look up objects because we can't share memory. Uh, we must restart Sidekick when changing workers. Uh, please use hash with indifferent access, reduces errors from indifferent humans. Um, and then mind how your code runs. Timing issues and race conditions are now possible. If you're used to programming in single-threaded, linear, executing Ruby, these are just things that you might not be used to. Um, 
Sidekick Q is my favorite part. Um, so some pseudoscience for us real quick. Damage per second, video game talk. Um, if we do 20, 20 damage over a five second Q time, that's 40 damage per second. So even though something the Eagles does a thousand damage, per second it could be quite a bit less. And we also see that this causes blocking issues previously. So it would be nice if we can basically divert long running and short running tasks into different workers. Uh, that way we can have all the short tasks drain through very fast. All the long tasks that have to finish based on our game mechanics can still finish eventually. Um, and also we could, if it, at the end, use the free workers, or the free short queue workers to help us with the long queue workers, but we're not gonna do that. Um, so this brings us to code journey number three. Our last code journey because I'm getting tired, but there's one more we could do later. Um, so let's talk about how to do this. Let's go back in our battle controller. I'm gonna go ahead and do uh, battle new. She gives us a fresh slate. Also, it's still queuing in the background, so I'm gonna go um, flush all of the old jobs. Cool, so let's start in the proc file. Right now, we're just running sidekick, um, but what we really want is to do something like long kick and short kick. And we're gonna stay with this superficial limit of concurrency five. So let's just throw three long kick, three short kick workers and two long kick workers. And the way we specify Q, so right now, if I didn't, hadn't have killed, let's see. Got to take a restart real quick. Um, well, we cleared it all, but you would have seen default Q. So now we're gonna, if we do this successfully, we'll see two separate queues that Sidekick will let us play with. We're gonna do long queue and short queue. And there's different ways to set these up. You could do them in like a YAML file, just read the docs for more uh, information. I just like doing it all in the proc file. Easier to pass like environment variables if you have it like from Heroku, just like I think it's super easy to mess with. Um, cool, so the way we wanna start doing this and you'll notice the theme in how I like to program. Uh, this is like some pretty intense logic to be happening in the controller. I'd really like to have maybe like a move manager service that we can just throw parameters at that will like decide what to do um, instead of knowing that we need to execute it that way in the controller. So we're gonna start by touching move manager. Um, which if you're not familiar with services, they're just plain old Ruby objects. So class, move manager. So we're gonna initialize, we're gonna throw out some parameters. Um, we're gonna copy and paste hash within different access. You'll notice I really like that which will kind of just normalize whatever parameters we throw it. Uh, for future people on call, this will help them. Um, parms, it's like where we're gonna eat lunch. Parms chicken, sorry, thank you. Uh, most deaf. I'm just queuing up free beers here, guys. <laughs> um, so let's go look in our controller uh, battle. So really what I wanna do is I want to do something like this, move manager dot new. I wanna throw it the same params. It's nice. Um, And we could basically go back to what we had at the first where we do like if move dot make, do one thing, else do another thing. So kind of just writing the API that I wanna use and then we're gonna go back and make it. We're gonna comment this out. Um, so with our initialization step, 
we're going to set a class variable, or instance variable, sorry, of player ID, and probably want to actually do player again, because it's kind of a detail that we need the ID equals uh, params player move move player equals player cool it's kind of setting the stage for us we're going to go back throwing move manager player instead we're going to let the service take care of the details there. Um, next, we need this make method. Bang. Um, and so, what does this method need to do? It basically needs to do. Oops. This perform async thing we had. Oh, which is totally gone. Um, move worker dot perform async I can spell which I can't um, let's look at that again move worker can't remember what we did in there oh cool that looks up the player for us. That makes so much sense. Um, so player ID, player ID, move, move, cool. So it's my suspicion that we're getting close to working. Say that one more time, sorry. I don't understand. Parameterizing. Oh, so this is a. Okay, cool. Sorry. No. Um, I have I have thought the same thing while I was making this. So, all part of the process here. Um, so let's see this burn. Uh, we're going to restart things because we're conservative. We're going to do, but not that kind of conservative. We're going to do <laughs> new battle, form and start. Let's see if there's any obvious fires that aren't supposed to be there. Um, okay. I see that's successful. Let's look at Psychic. I see it's in queued. Uh, fun thing we did. Um, right now, if you look at our proc file, uh, everything goes to the default queue by default. Um, and we have absolutely no resources thrown at the default queue. So we're going to keep going and throw these into the right queue. Um, but that's why it's not working right now. So um, I think the easiest way to do this is uh, we're going to make a new worker called short worker. Um, actually, we're going to do short move worker. And long move worker. They're going to inherit from move worker. Uh, long move worker. They're going to inherit from move worker and just set the queue. Um, so short move worker. Um, so again, class short move worker going to inherit from this move worker so we get all of its goodness and we're going to override one thing. I think that's a pretty easy way to do it. So if anything changes, uh, there's alternative ways to do this too. Um, but I like this one. We're going to specify which queue we're using. So short move worker uses short queue. 
and you'll never believe what happens next. Long move worker uses long queue. <laughs> Cool, so now all we need to do is go back to our move manager, and we're almost done here. Um, when we make this move, we basically need to divert um, the logic for like, so I know I need to make a make short move. Def make long move. So long move worker, uh, short, and typing in Ruby style English, we're gonna do if short move, make short move. Else we're gonna make a long move. So we need to implement short move method, which I wanna do is short move. Oh man, typing so hard. <laughs> Stub it out for one second while I go in a short move. So it's because of how we've declared everything, which is nice, all we need to do is move uh, Q time. Um, so if it's a short move, the Q time is going to be less than four seconds. That seems like a nice shot in the dark. Uh, we would probably want to bring this into a constant, do some like crazy logging on this and figure out what the real short time is, but we're not going to because uh, we want to go eat lunch after this. Do what? And we're on call, yeah. <laughs> Which is why there's no test, right? Super realistic programming situation here. Um, no, please, if you're listening at work, I always write tests on my... <laughs> um, okay, cool. So let's go see how this works. We're gonna do our little dance, which we probably should have made a rake task. Redis CLI, flush DB, exit, clears out all of our keys. Uh, we're gonna start up our server. We're gonna do a new battle. Tired of being Gollum, I wanna be my absolute favorite character, veteran Axan, who swings axe and swings axe harder. <laughs> um, we're gonna try to swing the axe. Fail, awesome. I won't tell you if that's planned or unplanned, but we're gonna find it together. Uh, okay, cool. Doing that now, short move worker, short. Walker, no, these are people that make Chinese food, people who man the walk. Good catch. Um, cool. That was in a worker, so we're going to restart. Sidekick. No, that can't, that's impossible. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Two more beers. I'm running out of money here. Um, Success, damage is going. Yes! And so, just because we're a little bit sadistic, we're gonna do a heavy assault two times. Oh my goodness, all this user traffic, the tower, what's happening? HP's going down so fast, the queues. Busy, five, look at all this in queue. 120 things in the long queue, 138 in the short queue. The queue's draining faster, the short queue's draining faster. Oh, who's gonna win? I refresh, boom. Nice. Um, and, and we're gonna conclude live coding there. Uh, the other thing we could do is weighing the queues. So if we separate them by risk, we can make like some take longer than others, so like basically two to one, but we're not gonna do that right now because we're done. Uh, which I want to end with a Lord of the Rings quote that seems relevant. It's a job that's never started, it takes longest to finish. Thank you.
Any uh, questions, comments, concerns? We we are all the sidekick and the hero. We share we we share the glory and the failure. But yes, yeah, sidekick is a hero. Thank you, Mike. Uh, Aaron, Mike was the person that made sidekick. Uh, any other questions? Why do I need what? Why do I hate databases? Um, it's mostly out of personal spite for Rob. <laughs> Uh, yes, it would be way more efficient to shove a lot of this stuff in Redis and use the database differently. But again, just this was helping us expose another situation. Yeah, cool. Good, good question. Um, let me start this. It's an Electron app, sorry. Bound to crash all the JavaScripts. Just kidding. But so, like, we have, like, some awesome primitives here. So that whole, uh, and the question was, we have the Sidekick UI. What else can we do to, like, increase monitoring? So, like, uh, for example, in a lot of our applications, um, we export a lot of that job information via timers to Librato. Um, so we have a whole nother layer of monitoring. So we're building out, you saw those nice charts that I exported, super crisp, D3 probably. Um, but we also have access to all of these primitive keys. So like we can, we could totally go remake uh, the UI in a different, like, I don't know, use a different JavaScript front end framework to make a different UI. We could also just set up some type of separate process that monitors these keys and tells us if something's going on. So like, for example, if our notifications worker, notification workers, uh, like for the app that I work on, we send out a lot of email and text messages, which people get mad if they don't get. Um, so if that starts um, either taking too long to send, or if the NQ number gets high, which would mean we have some type of back pressure issue running out of workers concurrently, some things are just like taking a long time. Uh, we can we can see that ahead of time and again like the I still use this interface a lot so for example if we had like notification worker queue um, I would come in here and be like oh this thing's been running forever look at the uh, like the details and be like oh my goodness goodness this looks like somebody's trying to do this with weird random stuff which happens sometimes um, like plenty of ways to troubleshoot does that make sense did I just ramble on for a long time sorry I guess this is my soapbox um, any other questions? It looks like Sidekick is uh, an open source project maintained by one developer and reading a lot about single developer project burnout. Why would I have confidence in using Sidekick? So why would I use Sidekick? It's open source. Uh, there's only one man maintaining it. So Sidekick has a pretty interesting open source funding model. It's very novel as in it's quite sustainable for the developer. Um, there are pro versions of Sidekick that companies pay for. Uh, so you can do pro and enterprise versions of Sidekick and get fancy, you can also get commercial support. So again, if your company relies on Sidekick, employ this person. He's made this awesome software that runs very well. If you run into any edge cases, pay him and he will help you. Um, and he, that will also help him eat. So helps everybody eat. Any other questions? And 